everybody. Welcome to Penguin Teen. We are going live today on our channel for probably one of the very first times, I think. But we're doing a live, special, super special, exciting activity for you. First of all, I want to say to everybody out there who is at home, who is washing their hands, good job, stay at, keep the course. But also just for people who are having a tough time, I hope that you're doing okay. I hope that, uh, yeah, I hope my thoughts are with you and everyone at Penguin Teen, our thoughts are with you. I'm Felicity. I am a Penguin Teen staff member and for many people who may not know, I am a very big Vampire Academy fan. Huge Vampire Academy fan. So have been probably since the series first came out. Hi to everyone who's joining us. I see all your comments. So excited. Um, but So I'm not going to delay too much. I'm going to let a few more people jump on. But everybody got a big exciting guest today. When we were talking about having a YouTube live that you could all speak to an author, many names were thrown about. Many people were talked about, but of course, only one name that we could have used. There is only one person that we had to have to kick this off because so many people ask Penguin Teen day to day to day, what's happening with Rochelle Mead? When can we see Rochelle Mead again? Can we talk to her? Can we hear from her? And so without further ado, welcome to the show, Rochelle Mead! Hello. Wait, I have a sound effect. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> oh, it's like we aren't social distancing after all. Do you have like a studio audience over I there? Mean, they're just off camera. They're just off camera. Okay, understood. Yeah, okay. yeah. But first of all, Rochelle, hi. Hello, it's so good to see you again. I know. How are you? How? First of all, how is you and the fam? Is everyone healthy and safe? Yeah, we're good. We're so far all still getting along. And uh, some days we even don't wear pajamas the whole time. So it's, hey, it's progress, you know. That's amazing. That's awesome. <laughs> I know I was putting on a face of makeup today going, whoa, this feels different. It, it is. It is. The nice thing about this height, though, is we could like still be in pajama pants. And I mean, know. I'm not saying what's, what's, what's on the lower half. <laughs> I may have Uggs. I'm just saying. All right. <laughs> but... I won't ask. Obviously, so many people, as soon as we announced that you're going to be our guest today, had a lot of questions. So if you're watching, guys, leave the questions in the comments and we will get Rochelle to answer them right now. So I'm very excited. But first, I, of course, as the host, get to jump the queue. I have questions yeah, sure. for you. First of all, how long has it been since you've like had a book out there? It's been probably a little while. Like I think it was uh, Soundless. Uh, oh, no, it was um, something else. Yeah, it was uh, the last glittering court book, yeah. and uh, oh man, so you oh, that's embarrassing. Um, no, 20, 2018 maybe. Yeah, of. but that's good. You've, that's, had, you've had a little break. It has been, but to be fair, uh, I have written like choose your own adventure books with my kids at home, so I don't know if that counts. They're like twenty pages long, and often it's like choose your own. Porg adventures from Star Wars, or they have one book they love where it's like you can be daddy, and so they get to like you know your dad. You wake up, what do you do? And so that's uh, I have been writing. So yeah. there. Oh, oh, <laughs> that's another question that everyone wants to know. But I guess taking it all the way back, for people who loved Vampire Academy and still want to know all the things, take us right back. How did Vampire Academy come about? How did you like dream up the idea? <laughs> Uh, uh, well, it's, uh, a lot of things came together for it. This was, this was way back in the day of, uh, paranormal romance and urban fantasies, uh, big, big bang there. And, uh, I had written the Georgina Kincaid first book and Stormborn and I zipped through those, which also seems impossible to me. Like I wrote those so quickly and so I had time to kill. So why not start another series? Uh, and someone suggested I did YA since I taught junior high. And I thought, well, what haven't I written? Uh, how about vampires, YA vampires? No one would ever think to do that. <laughs> uh, and it was, I don't know where Twilight had, it, it wasn't fully out then. And so I was mostly oblivious to it and didn't realize, you know, what was happening. Um, and it may have been a mixed blessing because I got... Uh, we all got just kind of pushed promo in that genre. Yeah. Um, but yeah, after that, it was just ideas I'd had. I wanted this sassy, you know, kick-ass girl character who could be out there, but I still wanted this intricate mythology background. And a lot of things came together. And before I knew it, it had just like grown out of control, but in a great way. 
Well, and Rose was such an important character for so many young YA readers of the time. Like it was, it was Katniss Everdeen, Tris Pryor, Rose Hathaway, and probably Clary from Mortal Instruments. It's sort of that four power, women power kind of YA leaders. Was there something in the water, do you think, or just you all felt it was time to sort of centre young women to their stories that kind of hit at that same moment? Yeah, I think uh, for a lot of us, I know for speaking for myself, it just felt natural. And, and that's been a question asked, you know, why did you choose to write a strong, independent woman? And, and my response is always, why would I not? <laughs> like, it's, yeah. it's hard to imagine if you're writing a, a female character, you know, she needs to be able to, to hold her ground. And I think a lot of my peers um, did and still do feel the same way. It, it's the norm and should be forever that way. Yeah. All right. Well, I, I could keep going because you know that I'm a fangirl, have been since we first met. <laughs> um, but I, my comment section, I can see it, is going crazy with questions. So I'm going to get out of the way and start answering, asking you some questions on behalf of the fans. And I saw one that I loved. Uh, hang on, I've got to scroll through it because the comments are going crazy. Um, oh, okay. From Lyra, I'm just going to put it on the screen for us all. I'm just going to find a good spot. From Lyra, you would like to know, who is your favorite character to write about? Great question. To write about, like, uh, you know, it, Adrian Avashkov is still a joy to write after all this time. Uh, yeah, I, I think that will go down. Historically, it's one of my favorites. And even for those who like noticed that I changed my, my Facebook cover page in the first time in like <laughs> three years recently, it was like a, it was a shot from the graphic novel of Adrian and Rose. And it was just like, Adrian's Adrian, you know, he's how he is. He's a special guy, our Adrian. We love him. <laughs> All right. The next yeah. question is from Shelly. And Shelly wants to know is that, she loves Georgina and felt so bad for her. Can you tell us a little bit, for those who may not know, who's Georgina? <laughs> uh, well, Georgina uh, Kincaid was from my very first series, the Succubus Blues series, uh, which should be read by my, my readers who are 18 and older. Good point. Um, Good point. I, I don't know. And it's, it's kind of a, you know, it's a racy book, but uh, Georgina is a succubus who in mythology is someone who basically steals energy from her lovers and in some drastic stories kills them. She's not quite that sinister, but uh, yeah, she's uh, trying to make it in this crazy world, trying to find love, which is a little hard when, you know, you kill the men you're with or suck their energy. And uh, wacky mishaps ensue though. It's not completely heartbreaking. It's kind of romantic, kind of funny. And I, I'm a fan, but I'm biased. <laughs> yeah, I think there's a lot of fans out there for her. The next question comes from Kristen Young, and she would like to know, what have you been currently reading? Uh, I've actually been reading uh, the Wings of Fire series with uh, my eight-year-old son, uh, which is fantastic. Do you know it? You I, yeah, no, I, I, book, yeah, series, right? do I know it, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> every middle grade and young, young adult. No, it's, it's really fantastic, and it's been fun going through those with him. And, uh, yeah, so... That's currently on the, the dock there. Okay. Now, this question I'm seeing a lot, and I'm, ticking, I'm picking one. It's from, from Nadelle Snell, but a lot of people are calling for, what's happened to Sydney and Adrian? I need more Sidrian in my life. And I love <laughs> this question so much because so many fans, uh, when it first went down, when the end of the Vampire Academy series, and spoilers if you haven't read it, but it doesn't end well for Adrian in terms of his mm. emotional part. But he, Sorry, he and Sydney have come out and at times the fandom can rival Rose and Dimitri for the hardcore stance of those relationships. What, what has it, that kind of meant to you in that respect? Uh, it, was, it was great to see that. And you're right, there was certainly after Vampire Academy ended, like, how, you know, how could that happen? Who could take that place? Um, but, yeah, it's the whole dynamic of the relationship is uh is so different and it's so fun um the way they they get along and it's, i mean i always say this i could go back to anybody um what are they doing they're kind of you know they're chill they got a semi suburban life but you know <laughs> adventure and like, tragedy and 
thrilling stuff is always around the corner uh, for them. I've had uh, I've had various projects in the work and sketches and samples of of things I've played with for continuations of characters in that world or new generations of of things. And so we'll see if there's a th synthesis of it coming together, kind of like the first one. Uh, but they're out there. So they're out there. Happening, they're out sure. there living their best life. Okay, I love this next question because. Duca Blue wants to know if you were a character in your books, which one would you be? Oh, man, it's so hard being all of them. I <laughs> I don't know that I who I'd want to be. Who's like the happiest and well-adjusted person? Is anybody? <laughs> they are until you play with them. Until you do. Yeah, right. Them. <laughs> so probably someone I haven't messed with, like someone they've seen. You know, that excuse me seems perfectly normal. Um. Who would I most want to be? I don't know. Maybe I do want to be Rose and be insanely physical and, you know, out there and defender of, of everybody. Um, but yeah, it's hard to say. Yeah. Um, it's fun. It's fun. All right. Well, and speaking of Rose, uh, Laurie Wrights would like to know, is, will we ever see more Rose and Dimitri? <laughs> there, see, there it is. There, there, there. 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 I know. Um, you know, it's it's like I said, I, I do have it's not like they aren't written off and gone forever. There's there's always like things uh, percolating and we're actually we're in my office and there's piles of notes and stuff that have um, ideas for future things. Um, and so I hope you do, which is the the answer to that. Um, I can tell you if I if I ever have them in a book, it's not going to be um you know, here we are continuing in Rose's POV. Um, they would probably be, I mean, they'd be secondary characters, but probably mentoring type as well. They'd yeah. be like the old generation, not too old, you know, they're still cool and hip. But um, if, if I continue on in that world, I would picture it'd be sort of a, a newish group, but certainly still interacting uh, with our favorites. I mean, I don't want to press you, but I do feel like Rose and Dimitri would, you know, be some great teachers at St. Vlad's or something like that. I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. <laughs> no, I, I see that. And I think, uh, I think there's a lot of potential to put Rose in a mentoring teacher role. You know, the whole, the whole crux of the Vampire Academy, the first series is, you know, she's the student and Dimitri's the master, you know, and she learns self-control and stuff all through the book you know but is she really in control enough to now be the master and and teach someone else and uh i think i think that's got the potential for a lot of funny and a lot of serious because you can sort of you know people people say like um you have kids to punish yourself for what you did you know i could see that with rose and her students like oh is this what i was like oh no now i understand you know uh but at the same time she has a lot to to offer and uh i it would be a good thing yeah well this next question is again a spoiler and i'm sorry if you haven't read this series but what are you doing we've given you time but <laughs> for a u.s that was why i took this time off just so that everyone could catch up <laughs> right? i was good. tired of talking about spoilers if you haven't done it right you're super smart thinking but also <laughs> for those who haven't read it our u.s residents we still have the e price e book price down price happening right now so Vampire Academy is only $1.99 and the rest of the series is $3.99. So for our US residents, if you're watching and you haven't read it all yet, now's your chance. But the next question comes from Andrea Shute and she would like to know, did you always plan for Adrian and Sydney to be Endgame? Uh, that is a great question. And I, I would say I knew from when Adrian was first introduced that he was not going to end up with Rose. Sorry, that's a, a spoiler there. Um, we're, we're in spoiler but, town, don't worry. We are, you know, you knew what you guys were getting into when you started watching. So, you know, <laughs> disconnect now if you need to. Uh, no, I knew that, and but he is so beloved. Even then, he took on a life of his own. And so I, I had this going on where like, okay, something, he needs more, you know, he needs a uh, you know a love of in his life and it's interesting publishing as you know works so far ahead like yeah you know the the future of vampire academy when it ends was already being looked at you know mid-series wow. and so 
it was partway through that, you know, we meet Sydney in book four. And I think there's something, I don't know, there's some glimpse in book five or somewhere they kind of see each other in passing and someone's like, oh, you know, cute. Or I don't remember exactly. But like, that was already in the works at that point. Like, these guys uh, eventually are going to be there. Yeah. I mean, I feel like with Adrian, he tends to be the guy who appreciates any strong woman. So I feel like Sydney, he was like, yep, I see you as a good, as a good option. <laughs> You're good. The next question, which is sort of tied to that a little bit, is from Melody. And Melody wants to know, I loved Sydney. And she's like, I love how she grew and blossomed as a person. And I guess the question of that is, you know, did you plan for Sydney's growth to be so long? You said, you know, obviously Sydney was introduced in book four, but she in Bloodline series really goes through a journey. <laughs> she does. And I knew she she would grow and change when she was introduced in book four. Uh, it, just because it's, it's hard if, if you're going to have a central character who is so uh, close-minded and, and fixated, you know, it, I don't want them to be a central character if they aren't going to grow. So, you know, I knew when she comes in with that anti-vampire stance that it would eventually flip. But no, I did not realize, you know, by the end of Six Books of Bloodlines exactly <laughs> where it would go or how it would feel. And, you know, I, I talk a lot about how I plan out my books and I do, but in the writing process, it as it flows and blossoms, it's, it's a surprise to me sometimes exactly where that goes and so yeah she she became a lot more than i expected yeah uh the next question which i really love is is there any part this is from sherry wong and she wants to know is did you ever want to rewrite any part of the vampire academy story and i will speak from behalf of many people and say mason mason <laughs> me what would what would you have me rewrite i don't know i mean i know that he had to spoiler alert die that was the point but like he was just such a sweet cinnamon roll of girl. like, girl. so there's, there's yeah, I, I don't, know. I don't know how I would have you rewrite it. I don't know is the answer. <laughs> um, you know, I don't think I would change it. I know that's heartbreaking. I wouldn't change that part. Uh, when it's funny when I got that picture for my Facebook page from the graphic novel, like. As I was flipping through it, I saw like Mason's ghost and I was like, oh, my heart. But <laughs> no, I, I still wouldn't change that. Uh, you know, I think the only things I would change are just nerdy writer stuff. Like I always think I could have done better, or made a character feel more alive or something sharper. Um, but, you know, I, I stand by the things they did. You stand by your choices. I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. Okay. This next question is from Natalie Rodriguez. And she wants to know is... Could you write some more about Abe and Janine? Which I, I, I like that question. Okay, you froze up at exactly oh, the right. Sorry. Could you write some more about and Abe, then I was hanging. Abe and Janine. Oh my gosh, uh, that's that's been like a long time running joke of them. Uh, you know, so if maybe if there's ever a collection of short stories, I I think. Perhaps their meeting is like a story waiting to happen just because you feel like, how is this even possible? Um, but as far as future books about them, I I don't see anything about them. If Maybe they cross paths as side characters, but that's it. <laughs> well, and another question that, you know, we see a lot of, and I'm just here, I'm just trying to find somebody who asked the question, scrolling through the thing um where did it go of course i've lost it now but the question i'm going to ask on behalf of everybody is the question is tell us about the movie is there any news about more movie stuff tv do we are we pinning our hopes on a, on a potential adaptation there i know it's a tough question because there aren't a lot of answers but what can you tell us <laughs> unfortunately i don't have a lot of answers either um sadly as far as i know the answer to what's happening is is nothing uh I I won't bore us with technical jargon, but, you know, the, the film rights to any books, they shift from author and publisher over to uh, a film or director, whoever is holding the rights to that. Um, and without that, I mean, we're sort of out of the loop and uh, I don't believe they are doing anything. And so uh, that's it. You know, if, if they're not doing anything with it, then nothing's being done. 
That's exactly. okay. We, as VA family, VA fans out there, we are perseverance personified, if nothing else. So okay. we're going to keep shouting about it on your behalf to all the streaming services because we're ready. <laughs> we're ready for it. Okay, so the next question is from Leah, and Leah wants to know, is, was there a moment that Dimitri really fell in love with Rose? Uh, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I know, you know, I'm trying to think, like, is there, like, a moment? I I think it's, um, I think he was struck by her, certainly, very early on, like, whoa, you know, yeah. here is someone amazing, and sometimes in a ridiculous way, but also, you know, he, he recognized early on the, the, the power of her character. Um, I would think though that wow factor grew into actual love, um, <laughs> so to speak. And so there may have been a moment where like, oh yeah, you know, I, I have fallen in love. Whoa. But I, I wouldn't say there's one moment where it's like, oh, this is what that's it. That's what made me love her. All that other stuff. No, no, no. You know, it was it was a build from that first wow moment uh, up until you know, like I said, when he, you know, it hits him that oh, this has been happening for a while. Yeah. Oh, Dimitri, we love him so much. Mm. Okay. So the next question is from Juliana Martins, and she wants to know: Is can you say what Hogwarts house your characters are? So well, let's go to the core four: of Rose, Dimitri, Sydney, and Adrian. <sighs> I wow, um, that's that's a good question. Um, I would say I feel like Sydney is Ravenclaw. I feel like that's kind of a mm -hmm. a slam dunk there. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. Is there like a party Hogwarts house for Adrian? Is there like the unknown one? They're not like. <laughs> telling us about you know like i mean i feel like slytherin but it kind of just it makes it seem too easy but maybe adrian's a slytherin i don't know let us know in the comments maybe maybe i mean what is it slytherin's about you know power by any means by the way i'm in slytherin just fun fact for you guys <laughs> um as is my six-year-old he's not sure how he feels about it but i know i know what it's gonna be like um, proud mama proud mama yep yep um you know, I guess, um, yeah, sorry, I'm dropping the ball on this question. That's all right. It's okay. You let us know. You know, Rose is, Rose is probably um, a good Gryffindor match. You know, I think I think what I should do is go and, like, take the Pottermore quizzes on behalf of my characters. She's going to require, like, four different email accounts, but maybe I'll do it, and then I will uh, – get you guys the answers there i'm sure, straight from I'm the source sure, i'm sure someone has online already i'm sure it's out there oh i i am certainly tag, tag, yeah, yeah. tag either penguin team and we will we will retweet it so everyone knows the answers uh <laughs> the next question is and this is an, again a super popular one from cora denton and everyone else are there any new books that you're working on or even on ideas and you don't have to say what but just what's happening what's happening in michelle made frame <laughs> um yeah i have I would say two things Ooh. right now. It was three-ish, and I've kind of definitely shelved uh, one for now. And so there's there's two things, um, I'd say, that I kind of go back to and play with and do scenes for. Um, nothing enough that I can crack down and be like, here it is, here's this book that's coming. And uh, that's probably my fault. I've I've become my sort of worst critic now where, you know, I don't want to follow through or, or do anything unless, you know, I feel it's, you know, perfect. It's amazing. I, I felt like there was a time there where I was trying to rush so many books out the door that they, they weren't to the quality that I wanted. And so I, I the reason I kind of hem and haw between these ideas is I just, I want it to be gold. I want to feel it and know like, okay, this is, going to be awesome but i like the ideas i'm working on and uh i hope i hope yeah lightning strikes here soon yeah that's okay i think you gotta take your time and get, get it right as you said you did yeah okay now a lot of people in the comments are shouting at us and i see you all that everyone's sh shouting that adrian is hufflepuff big big hufflepuff but then there's a few and i tempest godwin says maybe he's slither puff little hybrid Ooh. so there's oh wow yeah so some people are saying I, yes, Slytherin. Some people are like no Hufflepuff. So maybe he's a cross. Wow, my mind is blown right now. Hufflepuff, huh? 
I, it's the or it's, I like I like kind of the mashup though. Yes. Um, yeah. It's the soft heart. It's the soft soft heart. Yeah. Um, now and over, maybe over, a transfer. Maybe a Slytherin. To, do they ever transfer houses? Like he starts off in Slytherin and then realizes his heart is out there for the world. I don't know. This is fascinating. I know. We could, uh, we could just sit here. It's like psychological analysis of the character. I know. Lots of times I get these kind of one-off novel questions and I'm just like, oh, I, I don't know. But this one is just like, I I could like ponder this all day. Yeah, yeah, that's great. <laughs> it's like a TED Talk essay coming. I can see it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the next question is from Mandy West and she wants to know is how do you come up with some of the VA characters' names? And I'm looking at some of the names that people are calling out, like obviously Rose, Dimitri, Adrian and Sydney, but also there's Eddie and there's Lissa there's so many christian ozera um yeah that's a good question names are are really important to me uh lissa's um comes from well vasilisa is actually a, a name uh, a common name in some russian uh folk tales and mythology and there's vasilisa the brave and vasilisa the beautiful and it's kind of this this sort of standard heroine type figure that shows up there and so that seemed for me like yeah that's what's you know my vampire regal princess is is going to be named um dimitri is just I don't know, it's like my favorite russian male name um it's also easy for english speakers to read which sounds weird but that that's important i don't want people to be like i don't know having to do too much work to understand my character's names um and then uh rose is is a weird one it just it felt right yeah um there's no special meaning there's no like rose and thorn symbolism <laughs> or anything it was just like you know what this this feels like her um and so yeah that's that's where that came from and sometimes that's how it is with names there's a feel a feel right factor and um in one of the the stories i'm teasing you with like book ideas um i like woke up at like 4 a.m trying to think of a name for this character that was in it and i because i almost i couldn't keep thinking about the narrative of the book until she was named because it just it had to feel right and it had to meet certain criteria and it just like it kept me awake i had to get up i mean so uh so yeah, there, there's a lot of factors that go into it. And I think Rose is so perfect because without it, we never would have had Rosa. That, that, when that, he calls that was Rosa. True. That was uh, a bonus. Yeah. Um, you're freezing. I hope I'm not. Um, no, you're yeah, fine. I didn't plan to, to have a, a cute Russian version that people would love when I picked Rose. It just sort of worked out that way. Okay, well, the next question comes from Kira, and she wants to know is, what's your favorite end to a VA book? What's the, what's the, what's the end of a book that you've been like, yes? Hey, I think you ask this because you know, you know <laughs> the answer. people like, are just like, oh, why are you so mean, Rochelle? Uh, I'd say Shadowkin. Yeah. I love it. And not, not because of the grief, uh, but because it, really had an impact on people and and good or bad as a writer you're trying to convey experiences and feelings and you know you want them to just you have you've become in that book you're so emotionally invested and um this kind of it also circles back to what i was saying about you know i want what i write to be just gold on the page and to be able to do something like that as as an author is just it's amazing. I, I know it's horrible. Like the hate mail I got from, <laughs> from that is like legendary, but uh, it, it had impact and it is something I, I feel unequivocally and, and I'm a big critic of my own work, but I look at that and I'm like, wow, that, that was done well. I mean, I got to say, it is the book even now when I see new fans read it and they're like, oh, I'm starting Shadow Kiss and I always want to be like, it's okay. <laughs> There's more. <laughs> Um, we've got a time for a couple more questions because um, my battery is dying on my computer. So, oh, no. <laughs> I know. Um, so the question that a lot of people are asking, and uh, feel free to sort of explain as much as you want to or not, is that why did you take a break from social media? Like what, was there anything or is it just you were just having a break? 
Oh boy. Uh, there's, there's so many answers I could give. I could be like, I just, I was doing CrossFit the whole time or I was, I was training up for dancing with the stars or, you know, making, making candles. Uh, no, I mean, it, there's, there's a lot of things. There was, uh, uh, health reasons. There was just mental points to it. And, uh, it just, it became, I don't know, it turned out to be a healthy thing for me, even though I know it's been agonizing for some people um, to, to get me in a better place and my family in a better place. And I think with my writing, it is going to to benefit going forward. Um, it, again, um, you know, you you get rushed and you you lose it and you feel the stress of the world on you and, and the books aren't good. And so I needed that breather um, for sure. Uh, for my own well-being and i think it's it's been good for me perhaps not for for the fans but i hope i hope they'll hang with me uh and and see that that it's been a good thing yeah no and i do i think it's sometimes it's like everybody you need a break from these things it's it's, it's healthy mm -hmm. and it's good to step away and i can imagine probably at the height and this is probably my question is at the height of va and bloodlines was there a lot of fan pressure coming to you about the choices that you're making that not affected your writing but tempted you to affect the writing is there anything that you thought <laughs> thought I must not listen to the fans I have to write the story that I want to write and not what the fans want me to do I yeah and I I would say for sure that was ending the the you know the original Vampire Academy series um and again working as you do in publishing you know I I knew you know here we are we're closing it off at uh Last Sacrifice and but at the time, it was such in its heyday with books four and five, and you know people wanted it and they didn't want it to end, and it was a hard choice for me because if I kept going past what my original plan is, would I've just been making up stuff to fill pages, um, and I I wouldn't want to do that to them to give them a shoddy book um, just just for the sake of that pressure. So I did have to stand my ground um, and wrap it up the way I wanted it to. I'm here. I'm just fixing. All right. I, I lost you. I, I was going to start, you know. Like, no, no, you can you can carry this do, live stream on your own. I just, everyone yelled yeah, at me. Making so, up Vampire Academy poetry or, or something, but I'm glad you're here. Everyone yelled at me so much to go plug my computer in, so I just went and ripped my battery oh. out of the <laughs> office wall for you all so that we can keep this going. So let's pick up another question. And a lot of people want to know this is, Giovanna is going to be a representation question, but when is Dimitri's birthday? And a lot of other birthdays. A lot of people want to know birthdays. This is this is interesting because this has come up over the years, and um, I did I get, I think I went on record once as saying uh, Dimitri's a Sagittarius, and so that puts him in a very specific range um, there in December. I don't have I don't have the date. Um, I know Sydney and Roses. I've been on record um, February and April, respectively, and someone's going to call me on this. I <laughs> I feel like I said Adrian was an August Leo once. Um, I clearly, you can see this is not something I've hammered down, but I, I believe it's been tossed about. So. Yeah, and I also think for fans, there is the VA Ultimate Guide that was written by Michelle Rowan which I believe Ooh, yeah. has some of these facts in there. So if you ever want to go right into the mythology, it's out there for you. I should. I've got like one on my shelf right now over here. So <laughs> uh, A lot of questions. A lot of people want to know is, ah, I just lost it. Come back. Um, is it how many, uh, now I'm going to actually ask you about pronunciation. Is the mole ninja, am I saying that correctly, tattoos? Is that correct? I, I believe it's Molnia. Oh, see, see. Um, and I, I am not a Russian speaker, despite my, you know, uh, peppered use of it in the series. But I think I actually got that from someone who who does speak it, uh, or at least that my American mangling was close enough that Molnia is uh, is an acceptable way. Well, so the fans want to know. Obviously, Yvonne wants to know how many does Rose have. In, in on her neck and then also I love seeing all the fans I'm sure you do the fans who went out and got that like so many people have I've seen so many people with the tattoos themselves what does that mean to you as an author <laughs> uh, 
so two parts there. Um, how many does Rose have? I I don't know, but I know in my my mock-ups for for future incantations uh, or incarnations, sorry, of Vampire Academy, like it would be expansive. You know, it would be interesting to see how that's developed. Uh, and as far as the the fans, um, yeah, that was one of those things um, that just blew my mind as the series you know hit its its pinnacle and went off when people would show up and show me you know their molnia marks and promise marks and uh you know i i had i was of two minds i mean and the first was like that is amazing <laughs> like thank you no i i love it i can't believe my books had so much you know influence and then my second thought was like i hope they still feel that way in 20 years <laughs> you know because there it is so um so I still kind of hope that, you know, maybe that's my pressure, like to do more in that world, because, you know, how can I do that to the people who got tattoos? Like I have to, to keep it going for them. Oh yeah. A hundred percent. And also there's a lot of, I know there's a lot of fans out there who've got the Centrum Parabit, which is the Sydney and Adrian tattoo as well. Yeah. So lovely. That, that was a favorite. Yeah. Mine. Yeah. This next question is really lovely. It's from uh, Tiffany and she wants to know is how is it, what is it like writing serious and touchy subjects like mental health and alcoholism and eating disorders? And she says she loved how you humanize them in the book. Uh, it, it's it's um, it's hard to do for sure, um, but also kind of going back to strong women, it it just has to be that way. It has to be approached in a in a real way, but also an understanding and and gentle way, thinking about the people you know that experience it and um be because it is taboo a lot of times and people don't want to talk about that and so those who aren't familiar with it you know you they get ideas and you know half truths about it because because they don't really know what it's like or understand um things and, and i don't always know some of these things um some i do and some are just you know people's experiences and so uh, important for me to get that sort of understanding as well to hopefully uh make it authentic uh and respectful in the books yeah yeah no, and i think you did it so beautifully like there's a lot of the stuff that you handled across both series that really spoke to mm -hmm. people's own journeys but through that paranormal gaze of things so yeah nailed it yeah did a great job uh, <laughs> a lot of people i'm gonna ruin your sorry i'm gonna ruin your shot here for a second oh. i gotta shift I'm losing oh, feeling in my knees. So oh no! Like, oh no! You need need. We need to keep you healthy and safe. All right. Uh, Hopefully, you can still see me okay if I go yes. cross-legged. That's fine. We got. Am you. I okay? Are We're you all still good. okay? Great. We're all good. So the next question we're getting a lot of people asking about is that: Have you written any either the ending or any more of Age of X? And for those <laughs> for those who oh. don't know about Age oh, of X, wow. tell us a little bit about the Age of X series for those who haven't heard of it. Yeah, Age of X was uh, a sci-fi duo, as as it currently stands, two books um, that uh, was set in a near future where religion was sort of uh, outlawed and um, uh, mythological and magical elements start um, trickling in as this book series goes on. Um, and again, it's... Uh, I, would like to go back to it it's not done in my head and and not to keep like taunting you guys with like these piles of notes and stuff in my office like back there there's like a giant like white pad of paper that's like got a third book all sketched out um so what i would like to continue it but uh it's it's got to get in the queue there with all my other uh projects i want to do Oh, yeah. Well, there's a lot of, there is a lot of people asking about it. So that's good because it's sort of a little series that could really, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Is there, is, it, is, there, is there a series that people come to even now, sort of later, that has surprised you in terms of like when you first wrote it, it maybe didn't have a bigger fandom, but now you hear about it even, you know, 10, 15 years later and, and you kind of, you think, wow, people still love those characters. Yeah. Um, Age of X is that way, actually. Um, and even, uh, you know, the last time I, I did big book signings, you know, three or four years ago, um, that was astonishing to me that, like, at every signing, there was always somebody asking, <laughs> uh, what about Age of X? And I'm like, 
I, I've seen the sales. Are there that? I don't know how many of you are really reading this. How is this possible? You know, and it is. It's got this whole uh, cult following, which is which is great. Um, I love that. But that that's certainly, uh, I think, been the biggest surprise. Uh, seeing VA still read, you know, however many years later, uh, is less surprising that one's out there. It's still hopefully evergreen and will we'll stay that. But yeah. HVAC is definitely a surprise. Uh, another question I really love is, which book series so far has been your favorite to brainstorm and to write about in terms of maybe, you know, the creative process was just, you just had it, came up, came out of the, you know, onto the page really easily? Well, um, as far as brainstorming that process, I actually, uh, the Glittering Court series was, um, I and I think both because it was a semi-fantasy world. So, I mean, it was a fantasy world, even though it resembled certain parts of history. So a lot of work goes when you're creating a world uh, entirely versus a hybrid, say, like um, the VA series. And so, so that was fun. But it was also at a point in my career where I guess I was somewhat seasoned at world building uh, versus the VA world which was super fun as well, sort of came together in bits and pieces as I built it in my head. And for the glittering court, it's just like, okay, I know what a world needs now. And it was again, these giant white notebooks, you know, and maps and language and groups and stuff. And that was a fun process. Yeah, no, that was, I could see that. It definitely was on the page. Uh, the next question is from Nick Fitz. And they want to know is what they, I mean, they just, the statement is simple. I miss Dark Swan. Oh, you guys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Dark Swan is is a controversial fan one because um, I I don't know. Again, I I'm not sure I regret the ending. I, I like I said, I have to stand by all my choices. But um, the the artsy sort of makes you think ending um, was not received well by some people who wanted more closure. So I have thought not perhaps about you know, taking that ending back, but perhaps adding more on to expand it. Um, all that being said, I, I don't have a, a timeline uh, or anything for that one. It is not mapped out on a giant white notebook behind me. So it, you know, is even farther, <laughs> farther down, but it's all possible. I mean, these, these things live in my, my head. Uh, they just start to take up space with a lot of other things. But never, never say never is what we're basically saying. <laughs> say never. Uh, I love this quote. This is from Tandy Nunes, and Tandy wants to know is, what other genres would you dabble in, if you would? Uh, you know, and for a while there, I was, I was so just, like, burned out on my own books that I was like, oh, I don't want to go near fantasy or sci-fi again. But, again, having taken this breather, um, you know, those, those are what I love. Um, and it's still, it would still be in a, a cluster of fantasy, you know, it could be sci-fi, uh, dystopian, urban fantasy, like that whole sort of family. Uh, I can't see myself, you know, branching out, you know, and now I'm writing, you know, FBI thrillers or something <laughs> like that, you know, unless like it was a werewolf. I, I don't know. I'm just kidding. Uh, something like that. I, I, mean, I think I, I like, I like where I've, I've been, you know, it fits. I wouldn't say I'd read. I'd read your take on a werewolf FBI agent. I'm just saying, <laughs> F it's there. FBI werewolf. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> that's going to be on Goodreads tomorrow. <laughs> Rochelle Mead's untitled <laughs> FBI werewolf. You know, what? it's it's got the kind of simplicity that Vampire Academy has in its title, so you know, it doesn't it doesn't leave you guessing. So there you go. I just think you should put it out there. All right, this next one I love is from... I know, my agent's going to call me as soon as this is over, I think, too. I mean, I feel like uh, this is a, this this YouTube Live is a bonding contract for this book. We ha it's, ha <laughs> it's happening now. <laughs> the next question's from Hazel, and Hazel wants to know is, did you realise Love Fades, Mine Has would be such an iconic quote? Or are there any other, I'm going to add to it, any other quotes that you've been like, man, everyone just fell in love with that one, didn't they? Yeah, I... No, I mean, there's there's a lot of statements in my books that I, you know, I'm like, wow, that's really, that was beautiful. That was, per that was hilarious, you know, or whatever. <laughs> um, but it is interesting that, that what catches. And so, so yeah, I still, 
I'll see that one around. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's it's surprise. It's always surprising and amazing to me, you know, what means something to people. Uh, as far as quotes, though, I I think what is surprising to see catching that has made such rounds uh, is because it's actually not my quote, but it's attributed constantly uh, to Vampire Academy oh. series. And, and I'm sorry if anyone really loves this, but it's like it is, I believe, Juliet had it easy. She never had to kill Romeo. Um, and you can like search like Goodreads has this like, attributed me and people like they make like memes with it um, and stuff. And I once put out on Twitter, I was like, find me the book and the page that this came from. And like nobody could. And I, it's it's not mine. And I I don't know where this came from. If if it was fanfic or someone saw it and bought it. And I feel sometimes like I think about, it doesn't make sense. Like, I feel I, no, but also I feel like is it Twilight? Was it a Twilight? Like, is no, it doesn't feel right because that wouldn't be right. But anyway, yeah, I I don't know. So I, again, I apologize. I feel like when I call that out, like that is someone's powerful quote. Um, but it someone else needs the credit for it, I guess, besides me. Yeah, I like it. Uh, my question, next question is from, or well, not my question, but it's from Fiery Phoenix, and they wanted to know is what's your favorite Bloodlines book and what's your favorite Sidrian moment? <laughs> oh, the, the Sidrian moments are, you know, how, how can you count the stars in the sky or the grains of sand on the beach? Um, <laughs> there's so many good ones there. Um, as far as books, I, I think Fiery Heart is. Yeah. Um, because much like Shadow Kiss, it's kind of the most tragic, um, or I don't know, heartbreaking. And uh, not to sound cruel, but when I envision these books and the stories and the character arc, um, you know, of course, I see the ending for these series, but I also in my head know sort of the moment the series builds up to, um, you know, which is the, the major crisis point, you know, and then we start going towards the ending. And so Fiery Heart was it uh, for that series. Yeah, yeah. That was, you That you heard us a lot, I'll say that, the fans out there. Uh, do you, when you're writing that and you're writing those moments, is there some small part of you, and you or a big part that's like, yes, they're going to like, this is going to hurt? <laughs> I think we're frozen. I think we've got a froze. Did you refer? Yeah, uh, yeah, you froze up on me. Okay, well, I was asking, is there, you, is, we, can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Perfect. Oh, you're My freezing question, again. Oh, no. No, no. It might be a signal, might be a time for us to go soon. Is there any? Oh, no. No? Are you there? Can you hear me? Oh, no. I'm here now. Okay, great. But, so my question was, do you, when you're writing those key intense moments, do you ever think, Yes, this is the one that's going to have fans like you know wailing and up all night. Where you know cursing your name? No, um, and a part of, even though I've like gone on record many times saying, "Oh, I love those books," like I I really did not realize like the hurt Shadow Kiss <laughs> was going to cause. You know, and this this was back in you know the the early days of my career and it was also one of those things where it's as the email pours in I'm like I didn't know this many people were even reading but the just yeah the backlash uh, it didn't like hurt my feelings or anything it was just more like I can't believe this and uh people say you know there's no way anyone can come back from this and I think like I'm a fantasy author you know I can make anything happen you know of course you know stick in there hang in there um but it was still a surprise. And um, and so, again, I hadn't gone in to hurt anyone. And even with Fiery Heart and some of the other terrible moments, um, you know, I'm excited by the drama of it. And like, wow, did you know we take the story to the next level? But I'm not like, oh, yeah, I hope they're, you know, tears in their pillows and, <laughs> you know, buying their ice cream to con console themselves. You know, that's that's not my intent. I don't I don't want to hurt my readers. I love them. Oh, that's nice. All right. Well, we got this is going to be the final question, guys, and I'm st I'm so sorry, but there's we, we could be here all night basically with all the great questions and we're trying to answer a little bit of something from each book series and, and make sure that everyone had something. But the final question is from Nadia Almeida, 
And now he wants to know is what series do you recommend? What books are you reading right now? What are you loving? What, what's out there that's like got you addicted to the pages? <laughs> Boy, um, that's another good question, especially since um, I haven't read as much as I would like to. Uh, as I as I said, Wings of Fire. Um, you know, my my kids uh, are loving that, and I, as a grown up, love it too. Um, what else have I read recently? Um, I should, like look on my shelf to see if there's like anything besides um, that. I've got Harry Potter and the Cursed Child over there, which I know is old uh, for some people, but I actually really loved that. I finally got around to reading that recently. Um, and I don't know that there's, yeah, I'm sorry. That's only a question. I should just like, I mean, not only a question, it's only an answer to that question because um, there's this, dragon interaction that was very very bantry it was like romantic and it was actually so much like sort of adrian and his various love like you know love girls whatever that he has and my my eight-year-old is reading that and it's like i kind of like him you know <laughs> he's, he's kind of kind of funny the way he he you know acts and i was like oh just wait just wait until you see uh, which you're going to get to read in uh, like seven years. So, Well, I was yeah. going to ask, that leads me to this question, is will when will you let your kids read Vampire Academy and Bloodlines? When do the boys get to do what mom does? <laughs> oh, you know, they, they would love, they'd love to do it now or they, they think they would uh, because they finally like caught on to sort of what I do now that they're in school. Um, I don't know. It, you know, it may just depend when I think they're old enough for the content, I guess, in their teens, uh, you know, my, the, my eight year old, the one that we reads wings of fire, like he's, he could probably read every word in that book. He is such an advanced voracious reader, but can he, the, you know, the, the content stuff, not quite, quite there yet. Um, a fun fact, a bunch of his peers though, they're older sisters read my books. And oh, so oh. I, I do quite a trade at school like you know bringing in copies of books and and things like that so that kind of builds up the mystique more for my kids because they're like what are you doing where are those <laughs> books going you know so soon i'm sure they'll want to hey cool cool i'm on the playground cool i'm on the playground <laughs> well and so a couple of questions that i'm seeing from fans that to wrap it all up if fans wanted to get an autograph book from you no tour news at the moment but is there any place they can get that are you doing any no we're frozen again Oh no! Oh no! Internet connection. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Oh no! I can hear you. I don't think we're quite synced up yet. Okay, that's okay. Did you hear the question about? No, wait. You're there. You're. Oh yay! You're good. Okay, so any no tour news at the moment, but are there any um, upcoming? Like, is there any way fa fans can get books from you? Is there any signings? Do you do anything with independent stores in your neighborhood that they could order from? Uh, no, I mean, there's no signings, clearly, uh, going no. on anywhere, uh, unfortunately, um, and, uh, not, not with, you know, any indie bookstores right now either, you know, I think it's, while, while we're all inside, uh, there's not much of that, um, maybe at the very best I can, like, try to be on social media more, that's not quite the same um but but yeah. that's okay nothing <laughs> yet i'm hoping this is all you know we'll all come out on the other side of this and be back to life as normal and, and interacting so yeah let's we'll see how it goes let's get healthy first and then we'll get those signings done and i guess the question that everyone wants to know i'm seeing a lot of people before we go wanting to know about an adrian cinco de mayo story <laughs> <laughs> uh the adrian cinco de mayo story um Yes. Uh, and I, I love that people remember that because this is like two, we're coming on two years, I think, <laughs> that this was in the works. And Vampire Academy a, fans, for, do not forget. I'll tell you that. It, no, they, they do not forget. I Yes, I, oh yeah, I'm aware. Uh, 
It uh, was a story I was going to do as a freebie, and it's actually half written, and I have people's names, uh, and I've actually got their poetry, like, sitting right there on, on my desk. You guys are, like, this office is just, like, a, a realm of wonder. Um, but uh, they won a contest I did, and I was going to write their names into the story, and some of them already in this story. Uh, this was actually sort of before... I was right before I just had my complete, I have to stop everything yeah. moment and yeah. just everything shut down, including this story. Uh, and I feel really terrible. They they don't forget it. And, and I don't either, though, because it, it weighs on me. Um, so if I have those poetry winners out there or people that just really want to hear about Adrian on Cinco de Mayo, like, it's it's a thing and it's probably higher in the queue than some of these other things I've been taunting you with. Um, <laughs> well, maybe, I'm just saying it is. Maybe I, this Cinco de Mayo. I don't know. Yeah, it's April 4th, about a month or so. You know, time, time, time to yeah. do something. You know, even maybe if it's. Maybe I can like mash it up with my kids. Um, you know, I told you we write these homegrown choose your own adventure. You know, it could be yes. like, you are Adrian. <laughs> it's May 5th. What are your life choices? You know, they're. There we go. I don't know how that would work digitally. But, uh, um, would a hundred percent read that, and we would figure out a way to make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say I shouldn't mention it to you because you're like, oh, we'll find a way. Don't, don't you worry. <laughs> I'm the worst person to. I'm the worst person to. Uh, <laughs> and look, Rochelle, it's we've been guys. We've been chatting for a full hour. As I said, we could go on all night long, but people have families to feed and places to be. So, Rochelle, one of the great questions that people have been asking is: there anything you want to say to the VA fans out there? who've been supporting you for a number of years. Any final kind of messages or goodbye that you can offer them? Um, I, all I can offer is like a mix of my thanks and wonder that they are still my fans and readers, not just because I like went MIA, but because it, it has been a while since the series came out and a lot of people who, you know, read this in their, their teens are, have possibly grown out of that genre and the fact that they are still here in particular after you know moving on to whatever is is amazing to me that they just didn't like oh that was my whatever high school book you know um so i'm i'm amazed that you know that i've had enough impact that you're with me and the fact that i've always had people that weren't teens who read this series and that they're still here i mean the people watching this and commenting are still, you know, with me on social media. And so um, that is, that's moving to me. And it's, it's part of what keeps me wanting to keep writing, to know you're still relevant and there's still people who do want to read it. So oh. I thank everyone for, for hanging in there through, through a lot. Yeah. And that's true. There's like VA fans. Once I think, once you're a Vampire Academy fan, you're a Vampire Academy fan for life. So, you know, I want to say... <laughs> don't forget, and you stay with it. <laughs> don't forget feels like a threat, but <laughs> we'll take it. Uh, Rochelle, thank you so much for joining us today uh, on this... No, not at the end. We're oh, freezing. no. No, are you there? Are you there? I'm just saying thank you. I'm here. Oh, I'm there back. you go. I'm just saying thank you so much for joining us today. It has been an absolute pleasure to see you again and talk to you. I know Vampire Academy fans... Probably have gotten a lot out of this chat. It's you know everyone at home probably is rereading or reread or reading for the first time this year. So <laughs> to have you here answering questions today has been an absolute honor. Yeah, thank you for reaching out. No, of course. And guys, for you who are watching at home, thank you for participating. The questions we saw them all, they were so great. Uh, let us know in the comments who we should have on the show next. We'll see if we can get them on the show. Saturday chat. We're going to tell us if you liked it. If you'd like to make it a weekly activity. Um, but as again, I'm going to sign out as a VA fan myself, Rochelle, thank you so much for joining us and stay safe, stay healthy, and we can't wait to hear from you soon. Oh, thank you. Take care, everybody. Bye.